Welcome to Creative Conversations. I'm Rosie and today I'm joined by musicians Julie and Nigel. Great to have both of you on. Hi, great to be here. Nice to join you. Julie is an English folk singer and a classically trained violin player. She recorded her first CD in 2006 and now has a total of five albums to her name. Now Nigel is a percussionist and Irish whistle player, a photographer and worship leader and recorded his first solo album of worship songs, Sunrise to Sunset, in 2012, while on a career break from the civil service. They're also part of the Epiphany Network, which are a group of classically trained prophetic musicians, and they also have their own band, Celtish, and have released six albums. Now, Gillian Nigel, something that really stands out for me when I listen to you play live with Epiphany is the amount of skill, beauty and sensitivity that you have when improvising with others. Can you tell me a bit of how you got to that place? Yeah, well, Epiphany is really a group of friends that have known each other over many years. Um, and that's one of the keys, I think, to being able to improvise together is that we know and trust each other um, and that we're always able to listen to each other and not just listen to the sounds that we're making, but listen to each other's hearts and, uh, um, and, and not try and be the kingpin, but always sort of try and, and, and listen to each other because when we play with Epiphany, uh, the music is, we, we see the music uh, not as a performance uh, uh, in order to create a, a vibe, but as, as a language. So a, a way of communicating something. Um, and together we're all hearing little bits, different parts of, of what we communicate. So um, yeah, I think listening and trusting one another yeah, and, I mean, we all come from various backgrounds. I'm probably the newest member to, to join Epiphany. Uh, not because I got married to Julie, but since I got married to Julie, um, it just so happened that what I have done all my life, really, which has been improvising, fitted in uh, with Epiphany so well, not just the percussion, but um, playing the Irish whistles. Now, I could have been very, in fact, I was at first quite intimidated by the guys in Epiphany because they're all amazingly classically trained uh, musicians. Well, most of them are. Uh, and I realized that, you know, I've been apologizing for my whole life for not being a proper musician because I don't read music. Uh, but I'd also been apologizing in, in Ireland for not being a proper folk music musician because in Ireland, if you play folk music, Irish folk music, you need to be of a certain religion, which is, is crazy, really. So laying down all those apologies and joining uh, this crazy bunch of classical people who love to improvise, it was incredible. And, and I suppose what I've, what I've realized that I've been doing my whole life, mostly in a worship context, is filling the spaces with stuff that isn't the melody, but can bring something, can kind of bring Texture. life to a song. Yeah. I've always loved to do that in different bands as well. I've always had a heart for arranging music and listening to know where the next sound should come in or, or you know, telling someone you shouldn't be playing as much there or whatever. So coming into Epiphany, I was actually released into Epiphany and, and, and I suppose the mystery, it was demystified for me by uh, the former percussionist, uh, a guy who was the, the husband of our, our piano player who, who sadly tragically died but we, we we were able to do some stuff together as percussionists and he just told me to be myself just yeah. release those sounds you know you may not think you hear prophetically what to play but your musical knowledge god has created me in a certain way given me all my life experience in music and i can be totally myself and it's taken me a few years to fully come into that yeah. but it's so much fun to, to improvise and you feel so supported uh, when you do that because other people are listening and wanting to hear your sound. Yeah. So it's uh, so we use the improvised music as as a sort of uh, prayer language. So we might use a piece of music instead of words to to intercede. Or we do something called sound portraits where someone will sit with us and we will ask God and pray, what do you want to say to this person? And then we just begin to play a piece of music that's never been played before and that probably never, well, will definitely never be played again um, as, a, as a, a message 
from God's heart to them. And the beautiful thing about music is that we're not putting words into God's mouth. You know, one person can hear the same piece of music and feel completely different things. So um, God has used this, this strategy, if you like, this vehicle of sound portraits in not just within the church, but in incredible uh, places all over the world, actually. Mm -hmm. We've played in the European Parliament, we've played in the British Parliament, we played in the um, National Portrait Gallery, and we even played in the ideal home show in but also in house. extremely opposite situations yeah. in homeless uh, centers and deprived right. communities yeah. um we've done stuff stuff with um you know uh recovering alcoholics and and, and yeah, asylum seekers and music, people from all aspects whatever of your language you can receive something played in music and it can go right to the heart so we love to improvise with epiphany it's one of our favorite things to do <laughs> and it and it really is so touching. I've been present when you've played a sound portrait for a good mm -hmm. friend of mine, and I just felt you're playing her life story without yeah. words. It was it was really unusual. Um, Nigel also was really interested in what you said when you felt that you were free to be yourself, and I mm -hmm. I guess that would mean that you would be your creative self. And um, did your music change um, after that point? And also how would you suggest other leaders can create such an environment for, for creativity to thrive? Well, as, as a musician, you know, every musician wants to, to be able to, to be free to express all of their creativity, it's, you know, and I suppose for classical musicians, they have to learn to just play quite often what's written on the page, which isn't really releasing much of their own creativity, although, you know, all of their experience and training goes into that. So uh, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I would say um, almost my whole life I have, I have been collecting little different pieces of instruments which were always, you know, part of me and occasionally were brought out. But the brilliant thing about what we do with Epiphany is everything goes, ev everything is valid. In, in many ways, uh, as a percussionist particularly, there are different ways I can play instruments. It, I'm, I'm constantly even still learning different ways to play them just to add that extra sound or that dynamic. And um, so often, I suppose the worship music that we have in church is, is, is almost like one style, you know, particularly in the past few years, not to criticize it in any way, really, but, but there is so much it's diversity more. in music yeah. in our heart with, you know, through Epiphany and, and through the Celtic music that we play, uh, but it's not even limited to classical or Celtic. It's, you know, there is such diversity in, in music uh, that we need to figure out how we can release the different sounds, the, the sounds of brass instruments uh, in worship as an expression, you know, but not just playing a melody or what's written on a page, mm -hmm. but there needs to be space. I mean, Martin Smith, um, who, who is the songwriter from Delirious, in his book, he said, you know, our, our worship music needs to be filled with more beauty and more space. Mm -hmm. uh, and he learned that, you know, it's being in a worship band sometimes can be, you know, we need to play it this way. We need to learn how whatever Bethel do it. And, and oh, well, perhaps start there, but then, you know, let's take it somewhere. Let's put in space. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to, mm. to move in our music. Mm. And so what we do with Epiphany, obviously, we're not limited by a song lyric. Um, or and, any and so it's quite freeing. So I think um, that one of the great uh, enemies of creativity is fear. And Nigel said when he first joined Epiphany, he could have been very intimidated. And I think uh, as leaders, we need to create this culture where anything that, that stops creativity needs to be dismantled. And I think fear is, is a huge one. Fear mm -hmm. that you're not a proper musician because you can read music or you can only read the music and you can't do anything else other than read the music. Or uh, fear... Um, because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of orphans uh, around music, uh, around creativity, where, where people feel they have to fight for their place at the table. They have to prove that they're, they're okay to be there, that they're, they justify that they're there. And actually as leaders, and unfortunately a lot of leaders also have this orphan 
uh, spirit that, that needs to be dismantled by truly uh, being mothered and fathered. And, and, and part of that is championing one another and uh, facilitating one another. And, and actually, you will never uh, create music without making mistakes. So we need to remove the fear of making mistakes or, or looking foolish because that's the only way we're going to learn is to have a go and take risks but we need to know that we're safe in doing that and we're not about to get chucked out mm -hmm. of the worship band or whatever else it is so we need to be like mothers and fathers for each other br proper brothers and sisters not just mm -hmm. the language of it and to dismantle this this spirit of the orphan that feels they have to somehow elbow everybody else out of the way mm -hmm. if someone else comes along who they think occupies their space and is going to do it better than them uh, and uh, there's there's far far too much of that happening amongst Christian musicians and Christian artists mm -hmm. and creators yeah, for sure. This really shouldn't be a competition you know yeah. with one another or intimidation. Yeah. Um, I mean I in answer to your previous question I think uh, you know at the start, I would have been quite fearful of, of even starting something with Epiphany. You know, how can I just start an improvisation? Because, oh, what if I play a wrong, a wrong note? But actually what you find when you're working with people who, who know you well, uh, you know, personally and musically, it's amazing when actually you start something from nothing and all of a sudden strings come in underneath you. Somebody takes on a phrase that you've played and then it becomes an anthem and you're thinking, wow, look what just happened. Now, isn't, wouldn't that be amazing to see happen in the church, how we, yeah. we celebrate each other, we make space for each other, mm. uh, and we champion one another, and actually we give way to, another, to one another, mm. and uh, mm. make sure that, you know, every voice, every has, voice has a place to be heard, deserves. every sound, you know, does have a place, and, and that involves um, seeing what other people are doing. So often, uh, one of the things that we wonder about sometimes is is in this whole era of of sort of the any ears and drummers in boxes and people deciding what they want to hear in their ear and you kind of like well actually would you not want to hear everyone you know what everyone is playing <laughs> so that you can respond i mean yeah. i know there there are there, technical, there are technical reasons, reasons sometimes but it's things to but, aim for um, isn't and, it? I, and i know from my background as being a worship leader i mean i used to sometimes lead from the drums uh, and you could not do that if you cannot hear the congregation. Um, I, I love to hear a congregation singing. I love to hear when the spirit's moving, when you can sense that something's happening in the room. And musically, you know, those moments are amazing because you can play mm -hmm. into that. You can use, you know, your gift and you can you can channel the Holy Spirit in, in a way through your instrument mm -hmm. and create moments when really just God invades the, the space. Yeah. And it, it can definitely happen with all the technology um, it can yeah. and does, yeah. but um, sometimes if the technology takes over, um, I think some creativity can, can be missing there. Yeah, if we can't hear one another. And this, this thing about hearing every voice is so important. And I, I read a little story uh, not too long ago about uh, a, a Celtic saint called Hilda, who she lived in the 8th century. It was the 8th century, wasn't it? Um, I maybe need to check that for sure, I'm pretty sure it was the eighth century. And she was the leader of a, a monastery in Whitby in England, uh, which was a double monastery for both men and women. Um, and she, uh, she uh, decided to do something called passing the harp, uh, which in her barn, she would gather the whole community and uh, it, they would go around the circle and everyone would bring something, a song, a thought, a prayer, and they would go around the circle and pass the harp around. Now, there was a man that came along to Hilda's meeting uh, called Cademan, and he was an uneducated farm labourer, couldn't read or write. And he was so gripped with fear when the, pap, when the harp came near him, he would run out of the barn because he felt he had nothing to share. Well, Cademan one night had a dream and in the dream he met a man who we now know is Jesus and who said to him, Cademan, I know you can't sing to the, in the barn, but just sing to me. And Cademan began to sing a song of creation. And uh, when he woke the next morning from this amazing dream, he not only remembered every word that he'd sung, he remembered the melody. 
And as he was sharing this with his uh, people he knew, they said, you have to sing to Mother Hilda. You have to tell Mother Hilda. And Hilda gathered all of her leaders to hear Cademan's song. Well, the uh, end to that one is that she persuaded him to join the community, not as a monk, because she felt that would distract him, but as the bard of the community. And he became so famous that his... Uh, his uh, fame spread abroad as well as to England and it's largely acknowledged that Caveman changed the face of poetry in Britain because he he wrote in the Anglo-Saxon language not in Latin or whatever it was at, at the time that uh, so but going back to Hilda it was her championing of Caveman and it was her facilitating other voices not just her she could have said well I'm the I'm the boss here it's my voice I'm the one with the microphone uh, but actually she recognized and, and realized that every voice, every person is as important. And in a way, that's what we do with Epiphany. We, yeah. we listen to each other's voice. I think also, <laughs> um, personally, the two of us, um, um, you know, quite early on in our marriage and coming together in ministry, we realized that there are some songwriters and some musicians whose voices aren't being heard mm -hmm. either because they're undervalued in, in, in their church or they've had a, a really negative experience in trying to record their songs. And so uh, Julie and I actually put together what really has become a, a record label, but it's, <laughs> it's called, we call it Sounds of Wonder. And, um, you know, as well as working with Epiphany as we do, and we've contributed to some of their recordings, we really believe in the power of recorded music. And, mm. and we had uh, a word spoken over us um, quite a long time ago about a pendulum swing between um, releasing the songs that were in our heart and recording them well. And we did that uh, through a vehicle called, through our band called Keltish. We put a label on it, Keltish. We've had several albums, but we've also now produced several albums for other people who, mm. Um, God has given me, particularly and uncovered in me, a, a gift of producing music. And so we've we've done a couple of albums with a Dutch worship leader called Vietse Volkemer um, under the name The Worship Company. And that has just gone truly epic. But he has had, he has had some terrible experiences mm. before of trying to record his songs and not getting anywhere. We then drew alongside um, a friend of ours, a retired music teacher, who had, who had done musicals um, in the past and had dreamt of, of, of uh, recording a musical, first one that she'd written about the prodigal son. Uh, but the Lord spoke to her very clearly and said that she was to collaborate and she was to collaborate with Julia and Nigel. Mm. And uh, that process enabled us to, because we were very, very good friends, we were able to come alongside her, champion what was in her heart and then go into the studio and produce. And then... Um, after we did that a couple of years later, I think what the Lord had really led us to do was um, produce a musical with, with Maggie uh, about the, the story of St. Patrick, which we then um, toured with a cast from England and took to Ireland and, had and fun put it to on. do it professionally. Um, it was absolutely amazing. And it was very much, this all came out of laying down, I suppose, you know, we, we sometimes say we don't even like musicals and yet we've produced some, but drawing alongside others and saying, well, what's in your heart? Yeah. How can we collaborate yeah. together? And we ended up collaborating in some of the songs and melodies. Yeah. And finding their sound, not not putting our desires on yeah. to a song, but finding the, the, the true sound of the person. I feel that, that heart. I know certainly when I've been with you in some of our tabernacle gatherings. I do you feel the honor um, and the collaboration. Mm. I remember yeah. I was on the dance team and you know, I could just be going like this with my fingers and Julie, you'll just be all of a sudden there, just, <laughs> you know? And <laughs> there is what I'm seeing. Exactly, and, and waiting and, and the, the space and the listening and, and the eye mm. contact, it, it, it really is amazing. Now, there's lot, going to be lots of different um, artists, musicians listening to this. Would you like to offer any advice? Um, first of all, is celebrate what uniquely God has given to you, only you. Um, and do not be intimidated because God has called you and given you a voice and a, and a sound that is uniquely yours. And of course, all of us have to... Uh, develop that so but that's only for our sake so we're more fluent in being able to express what is in our hearts god is never going to listen to our sound and go oh oh what, what are you playing stop yeah. stop playing that he, he, he's going to say i see the heart 
from where that sound is coming and it's your heart that I see and I love your heart and it's the sound of your heart that that we are, are developing and my I suppose my practical advice would be that you know allow that truth to sink in that God has given you your unique sound and and begin to play have a go uh, play along with other people's music mm -hmm. on youtube uh, just get used to playing uh, if you don't have anybody else to play with at the minute uh, play with uh, along with music that you wouldn't normally play along with you know if, if you're in a church worship band and you play the clarinet well you're in trouble because there are many clarinets on in many of our worships uh, bands so find a different genre begin to uh, begin to play uh, uh, and and just get used to um following a melody and uh just going off piece a little bit so that hmm. that would be my practical yeah. um, uh and I, I would say if you're someone who you know uh, writes your own songs and you, you know you want to play them to people and you want to create and you want to produce them i would say you know be a little bit open-minded about what someone else can bring to your song even yeah. i mean we've had to realize that 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 uh, i might start writing a song and, and think it's amazing but julie will make it a lot more poetic but but at first i might be quite defensive with how, you know and it's that the same with, and it's the same with collaborating i would say mm -hmm. you know in this digital era that we're living in um collaboration is so so much easier than it used to be and i would say why not imagine that that your piece of art could actually end up being something that you couldn't imagine? <laughs> In you other words, imagine. Yeah. you know, I've always felt I have these great ideas for how a song should go, but if I'm willing to collaborate with another artist and allow them to shine and really bring something, it you know, you have to be a little bit open-minded and you have to say, Lord, you know, is this enhancing the core message of the song? Do I need to lay down my initial plan for the song and say, well, let's just go here. And when you're as free as that, it, it can lead to some amazing things. For example, last year, we were just finishing uh, um, uh, mixing our, our Christmas album that had to be released, of course, by you know November. And we were with Epiphany uh, at a gathering in, in Hounslow in central London. Yeah. And we were introduced to this guy who's a third generation Pakistani musician, actually the husband of, of the vicar whose church we were, we were playing in. And he brought us into his music room and I heard the uh -huh. Lord saying into me, you're not going to have to program those tabla drums. I'm giving you a real tabla player. And he not only played tabla on, on this album that literally we had to mix in two weeks' time, but he released the sound of a beautiful instrument called... Um, a rabab. A rabab. I'd never heard of it before. It sounds not unlike a banjo, but it just brings this Eastern sound in. Now, I said to, 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 to our friend Hamad, look, you know, here's what I'd like you to do. But if you hear anything else please feel free and goodness what he brought. And you would have to listen to the album on Spotify to hear what he brought. Uh, uh, this Eastern sound, which really enhanced the whole message of our album, Joy to the World. The world. Uh -huh. uh, so that was yeah. on Celtic's Christmas volume two. And, and I just, every time something like that happens, I, I just, like, I want to collaborate more. Just give us a, a sound, you know, so we have collaborated with musicians in, in the US, in, in Norway, who we met, um, through the worship company, through our friend Vitsa. And um, what a rich experience as a musician to, to join the sounds of nations together and release something completely different, completely new, you know, a fusion, you know, this is, and this, this is really what should be happening in our churches. You know, if our churches are multi-ethnic, we should be having all those sounds represented. Yeah. And this is, we had a lovely conversation with a guy called Les Moir, didn't we, uh, recently, yeah. who's a legendary producer he's got a, a, a beautiful book all about the history of the UK worship music and and we asked him what it, what yeah, was yeah I said I, I said Les what do you think God is saying to the worshiping church right now and he said collaborating across nations uh, mm. and we were like yay that's exactly what we're doing <laughs> on our Christmas album um, but the sounds of different nations God wants to hear his people uh, collaborating together mm. and, mm -hmm. and mixing mm -hmm. those sounds because we can now yeah. we're talking to you in Scotland and you know it's like you're in the room so uh, it's exciting times that we live in yeah oh. and, and taking risks you know and, and 
and allowing people to, to release their sound who, who maybe nobody else has asked to play before and mm. uh, just see what happens you know um what's what's the worst that can happen you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing about that, that album. Joy, was it um, the Christmas well, album? Uh, this yeah. was our, our Celtic Christmas volume two. Yeah. It was yeah. just the title of it. Um, the, uh, we only realised after sort of printing it that, goodness me, the, the recurring theme through all of the songs yeah. was Joy to the, the World. Joy, oh. joy we, to the we, World. We, yeah. And then we need Joy right We had now. a happy moment in, uh, when we were just sort of finalising. We came up with one fresh track um, uh, to put right at, you know, right close to, finish, to finishing mixing it. And we realised that the lyrics of Joy to the World, you can sing to Prokofiev's Troika, you know, the Christmas melody, da, 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 Joy um, to um. the World. Oh, no. So <laughs> there are people who listen to our Christmas albums, of which we have two now throughout the year, because we tend to put some different melodies to things. Uh, but um, oh, we, do, we just love the joy of, 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 of creating something that ha hasn't been there before, collaborating with other people, and, and then next time dreaming for, you know, even, even more of the same. Yeah. So, um, and so I, to be honest, yeah. No, sorry, carry on. I was just going to... Oh, I was just going to say, you know, like Eric Little, wasn't it? Um, who, you know, yeah. I, I, who when said, I run, when I, I feel... run, I feel God's pleasure. Yeah. Quite often I feel that in the recording studio, I feel God's pleasure when all of a sudden we're, we're creating a sound you know, and just just finding that that piece in the jigsaw puzzle that really the Holy Spirit has has been guiding all along. Quite often, we 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 just we don't know what the answer is for for us, the sound that's just going to complete a song. Um, and prayerfully, we the Lord just leads us and brings our skill sets together. Wow, so, uh, how exciting that you don't know how it's going to sound at the end. It was a surprise for you and everyone. <laughs> So yeah. where, <laughs> where can um, we find your music? The simplest way uh, are Celtic albums you'll find uh, by Celtish.org. Um, and you'll, that'll take you to uh, our Celtic music on, on the website, um, which has a lot of links to the other albums that we produce. Um, the main website is called soundsofwonder.org. And you'll find tabs to Epiphany Music and all of the other albums that we've helped produce there as well. Lots of other resources too. Mm. And we're also on Spotify and um, streaming platforms. And YouTube, I think, as well. Under yeah. Nigel Cameron profile, Julie Cameron Hall, and, and our Celtic. albums are Celtish, Celtish Home, Celtish Devotion, Celtish Christmas, etc. Brilliant. Julian, Nigel, it has been a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you so much for joining Creative Conversations. Oh, thank you, Rosie. Bless you. Say. 